Welcome to the show. We have a great one today. It should go pretty quick too because although we'll be covering a lot of ground, uh, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. And the overall concept of the project here is actually really simple. So the idea here is for somebody that has never forged before, or maybe somebody that just wants to try a different style, I'm going to show you how you can get into blacksmithing, get into forging, and you don't have to assemble a bunch of crazy tools or order stuff online or, you know, build some kind of crazy setup. Go out to your backyard. Many of you will already have a fire ring out there. Make sure you have something like a bucket of water or, or a fire extinguisher or something nearby because you're going to be getting your fire ring a lot hotter than you usually do. All you're really going to need for this project is a blow dryer, a hammer, and some hard flat surface to pound on. You can use a scrap of steel, uh, you could use a cheap anvil. In my area we have Harbor Freight, you can run there and pick up an anvil for about $15. I've seen them on Amazon, I've seen them other places. But really any flat piece of steel, or really even concrete, you'll probably damage the concrete if you use concrete for too long as an anvil, but it'll definitely get you through you know, a single project. For that matter, I've even seen people forge on a rock or forge on a like a tree stump. And of course, if you wanna go like really professional right from the start, you can definitely go out there and spend a couple hundred, 300, $400 and get a pretty decent anvil. But what I'm trying to do here is show that just about anybody can just walk out to their backyard right now and in about half an hour, an hour, you could be forging. Really does not matter what type of blow dryer you are using. Um, I actually did a review on this one that I have here just a couple of days ago. I paid $12 for this thing and it's been running for a year and a half. So definitely I think blow dryer is the way to go. But with that said, anything that moves air very quickly in a concentrated way, you know, like an air pump for mattresses or whatever, uh, anything that is designed to move a lot of air quickly uh, should work for this project. As I mentioned, I'm using this fire ring. I went with bigger stones for this because, well, for a couple of reasons. One, it's a windy day, and two, I'm gonna be using that blow dryer to, uh, to force air into the fire. So I figured it would be wise to have sort of the backside of the forge area uh, built up a little bit so I don't wind up you know, spreading the fire and having to put something out. Now, where I live, we've had a, a lot of rainfall lately, but it's just something to think about if you're gonna do a project like this. Uh, be sure you have something on hand, a bucket with water, a uh, garden hose, a fire extinguisher, or whatever. You know, just in case. So as you've probably noticed, I'm using a sort of aluminum nozzle. Uh, that's something that I put together just to put a little distance between the dryer and the fire. It's not an essential piece, uh, but if you can rig something like this up, it'll probably extend the life of the dryer a little bit. And as I mentioned before, you really don't need an anvil. I'm gonna be using an anvil and also a piece of plate steel. Uh, this plate I got from a welding shop. I just went in there and asked if they had any scraps or whatever, and the guy pointed me out to the yard, and I picked out a bunch of stuff that I figured I might use. I'm sure I had 30 or 40 pounds of stuff, and I think he sold it to me for 10. It was either 10 or $15, something like that. So a lot of times it's worth going to, you know, either going to a scrap yard or a welding shop or something, and usually you can find metal pretty cheap at places like that. Uh, you'll notice here that the workpiece is actually a piece of 3 8 inch rebar. You can buy this stuff. I've seen it as cheap as 3 or $4 for 20 feet of it if you go to like Lowe's or another home improvement store. But a lot of times you can find stuff laying around. You know, this was probably a you know, property stake or something that wound up in a junk pile here. And so I just decided, hey, I'll make a tool out of that. So when you start out with a piece like this, similar to like a 3 8 inch round stock mild steel, uh, it should have similar characteristics to that when it comes to forging or smithing work. And there are about a million different directions I could take this project. I decided I wanted to keep it simple, uh, partly because I want this to be a project that some of you who may be just getting started in this can do yourselves, uh, and also because I'm really not that skilled yet myself. So starting with a project like this coal spreader slash fire poker gives me a chance to do a few different things, put a couple of bends in here, put a little bit of a tip on the end, and as you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna create just a real simple sort of ring-shaped handle at the other end and that will be for, well, for storage, you know, I could hang it on a nail or whatever, uh, but it also gives me a little bit of something to grip onto. Now, you can obviously see here that I'm using regular wood here. I think most of this is uh, juniper and pine. It's actually seasoned pretty well, so it's burning pretty good. Uh, you could use charcoal if you wanted to. Um, I do have a couple bags of charcoal. I just decided to show you that you can use regular wood for, for doing this. A lot of people have charcoal and wood on hand. And of course, if you have access to actual, you know, like lignite coal, um, you know, that stuff will burn a lot hotter. I haven't actually used that in the fire ring sort of backyard forge type of setting, uh, but I imagine it would, it would work just fine. With that said, you know, I don't know how clean it burns. Neighbors might complain about the smell or whatever, uh, but really you don't need it. You, you can get things a little hotter. You could do forge welding, for example, pretty readily if you've got 
uh, real coal to work with. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with using charcoal and using uh, even regular firewood. Sometimes it's a little difficult to tell in daylight when you really have a good heat going. Uh, for those who maybe aren't experienced with forging, let me just say that as the metal gets hotter, uh, it'll go from kind of a dull red glow uh, to a brighter red, and eventually it gets to a yellow-orange. Uh, that yellow-orange actually shows up pretty well in daylight, but when it's in that dull red to maybe middle red, it's perfectly fine to forge at those temperatures, uh, but it's harder to identify in the daylight. So you'll see me kind of wailing on this. At times it probably looks like I'm essentially cold forging, but when you're there and you're looking at it, you can see that you've got at least a dull cherry red going. Now you'll notice uh, as you watch me work here that uh, I'm not an expert on technique. I'm pretty much entirely self-taught. So if you decide to do a project similar to this one, you can definitely do you know, what I'm doing here and, uh, and it'll work for you. But of course there are a thousand other videos on YouTube that really go into more detail on technique. Uh, my purpose in this video is just to show you how easy it is really to start up forging like right now today in your own backyard. One thing to keep in mind as you're working, and this is really one of the nice things about forging, you know, if you make a mistake, you just heat the metal back up and rework it. You could even, you know, straighten everything out and start over again if you're not satisfied with how things are turning out. Once I'm satisfied with the look of the coal spreader, I'm going to bring it inside and clean it up. This is something that you can put as much effort into or as little effort into as you want to. You know, it's meant to be used in a fireplace or in a forge. Um, so it's going to get dirty and it's going to get beat up, but I do put a little bit of pride into a piece like this, so I am going to clean it up. You could do this a lot of different ways. You'll see me use a few different power tools and things as I'm kind of going over it and cleaning off the rust and oxidation and scale and whatnot. I would say probably the easiest cleanup on this would be like just a, like a wire brush on an angle grinder or a bench grinder, but I thought I would show you know a variety of different tools that you could use to do the job. Uh, depending on what you have available to you. And also, this would be entirely up to you. I like to have a little bit of a point on the end here. Um, this is not only for spreading coals. I might also use it as a fire poker. Uh, might use it to you know, stir logs, like in a fire ring like we had out there. So I don't necessarily want a sharp, sharp point on this end, but at least something that I can kind of get a hold of a log with. And as you saw there, I could use a metal file for that. Obviously, there's I got a lot of different power tools in the shop that I can use. And you'll see me use a few different things. But really, even a simple metal file like that, if it's a reasonably good quality file, it's not going to take you very long to sharpen up an end like this. But, you know, on the other hand, if you have the tools, you might as well use them. And uh, I have a few tools to work with in my shop. So you'll see me use a bench grinder and a couple of other things. And again, that's just to show that there are many different ways to do this. You definitely do not have to feel like you got to run out and buy a bunch of new tools if you're going to get into a hobby like this. Really, you probably already have everything you need. You know, go back in time a thousand years. I mean, it's not like people had a bench grinder they could just, you know, plug into the outlet and go to work. So, you know, hand tools are fine, sandpaper, you know, just whatever you have is what you use. And of course, as you go along, if you decide that this is a hobby that you really like uh, and you want to get more involved, you know, that's when you start prioritizing, you know, should I build a better forge or uh, buy better hammers, or get a quality anvil, maybe get some professional training or whatever. It's definitely the type of hobby or type of craft that you can start out very, very simple and just build a piece at a time. You know, that's what I've done over the last about a year and a half. And I've really enjoyed the process, you know, from starting out with things very, very simple and then slowly working up and sort of filling out my shop and buying hammers as I needed them and buying a new anvil when I needed one. And, you know, once you develop a little bit of skill, you can even build your own tools and save some money that way. So here is the coal spreader finished. It's fine for moving coals around. And because we put a point on that one end, you can also, you know, maybe grab a hold of bigger logs with it or, you know, shift things around as you need within the fire or within the forge. Well, that is about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. Uh, I do hope you give this a try if you've been thinking about it. If you like the video, I would absolutely love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, you know, look around the channel, see if there's other videos you like. And then I will also mention that if anybody wants to support the channel, I did recently start an account with Patreon. So right here at the end, I'll have a link to that account uh, if anybody wants to go and check it out. And with that, I guess I'll just say whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful time, and we'll see you in the next video.